As of Monday, we are now in June and now officially in hurricane season. If you remember back a couple weeks ago, we technically started hurricane season early. And this is actually the sixth year in a row for a named storm to develop before June 1st. Tropical Storm Arthur was a short-lived storm that started in the Florida Straits. It passed right to the east of our coastline, not making landfall, and then turned east out to open water. On May 18th, Arthur brought over four inches of rain and gusty winds of 45 miles per hour to the Outer Banks. Our second tropical storm was Bertha, and this becomes the first tropical storm of the season to make landfall. Since 2016, this is the first time that two named storms have formed before June 1st. Bertha formed suddenly on the morning of Wednesday, May 27th, and made landfall an hour later, northeast of Charleston in South Carolina. By Wednesday evening, downgraded to a remnant low. Despite Bertha being even more short-lived than Arthur, Bertha still dropped heavy rainfall here at home and for many others with tropical storm force winds. And as of yesterday, we now have our third named storm, Cristobal. Cristobal actually started as tropical storm Amanda in the Pacific and then moved inland over Guatemala, El Salvador, Central America, and dissipated. The storm re-emerged and reformed in the Bay of Campeche, and since that is in the Atlantic, it takes the name of Cristobal. It also takes the place, record, for the earliest date for formation of a third named storm in the Atlantic. The old record was Colin on June 5th, 2016. As of this morning, Cristobal has made landfall, again, in the state of Campeche, Mexico, just to the west of Ciudad del Carmen. Life-threatening rainfall and deadly flooding, that is looking likely along the coast there as Cristobal hangs out into Friday. After that, Cristobal looks to move northward across the Gulf of Mexico. We will be watching for impacts into Louisiana, but also all along the Gulf Coast from Texas towards Florida. You may have already noticed the pattern, but Atlantic storms follow the alphabet and alternate gender. So now we are at D or Dolly. A tropical cyclone is a rotating organized system of clouds and thunderstorms that originates over tropical or subtropical waters. The eye, eye wall, outer rain bands make up this low level circulation that rotates counterclockwise. In order for formation, a tropical system needs warm ocean water, more than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This is to provide energy for a hurricane and cause more evaporation, making humid air and clouds. Then winds come together, force air upward, and the winds flow outward above the storm, which allows the air below to rise. The humid air rising makes the clouds of the storm and the light winds on the outside of the storm steer it and let it grow. A tropical depression has maximum sustained winds of 38 miles per hour, while a tropical storm has winds between 39 to 73 miles per hour. For it to be a hurricane, it has winds of 74 miles per hour or higher. The Saffir Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale is used by the National Hurricane Center to categorize hurricane strength and their wind speed. A major hurricane is when maximum sustained winds are of 111 miles per hour or higher, which is also category three or higher. The National Hurricane Center are also the ones who issue statements, whether that be advisories, the track, watches, warnings on all tropical activity. Before each hurricane season, NOAA puts out its hurricane season forecast. This year, they are predicting an active and above normal season. This includes a range of 13 to 19 named storms. Six to 10 of these could become hurricanes, including three to six major hurricanes. An average hurricane season consists of 12 named storms, of which six become hurricanes, including three major hurricanes. According to NOAA, the reason for this above normal season is for several climate factors. First, El Nino conditions are expected to either remain neutral or trend toward La Nina, meaning El Nino will not be present to suppress hurricane activity. Warmer than average sea surface temperatures to fuel storms like we talked about earlier, and weaker winds are favorable for development, plus an enhanced West African monsoon to get the storms going. Tropical storms can originate and travel in all locations, but are more likely in certain areas in certain months. You can see the likely area or blue color, while most likely is orange. You can see a lot more most likely or orange from August through October, which is the peak of hurricane season. This is because the water has had a chance to warm and atmospheric conditions are primed for more powerful storms. 
Whether it be a powerful storm or an early season tropical depression, we need to be prepared. We talked about hurricane preparedness week the first week of May, and we first need to determine our risk. Hurricanes can bring many hazards from the coastline to inland areas, even including the mountains. Storm surge, rip current, high surf stays along the coastline, but strong winds and heavy rainfall leading to flooding can occur for all. There's also the threat for isolated tornadoes, which Bertha even caused a few spin-ups around the Raleigh area. Next, we need to develop a plan that can be staying home or an evacuation plan. If evacuating, determine where you would go and map it out. You will also want to assemble a hurricane kit. Have enough food and water for each person for at least three days. Be sure to have any medicine that you may need, get batteries, chargers, flashlights, and a weather radio to get updates. And if you have pets, any medicine and food for them too. Some other things to consider before we get further into hurricane season is to get an insurance checkup. Check in with your agent, know your policy, get all your documents together, and possibly consider flood insurance. Along with that, you may need to repair or strengthen your home. Check your roof, windows, trim trees, and if or when a storm is approaching, be sure to secure or bring in outdoor items like lawn furniture. Lastly, make sure you have all your important documents and pictures together and share the plan with your family so everyone is on the same page. And of course, we will be here to help keep you and your family safe through it all. Weather history for this week is of the top 10 costliest hurricanes. And notice this is in billions of dollars. Leading the list is Hurricane Katrina from 2005 with $170 billion worth of damage. Then just three years ago, made landfall in Texas, Hurricane Harvey cost $131 billion. And extra tropical storm Sandy coming in third at $74 billion. And another thing to note that the top three, even the top four, costliest storms were not of the highest or category five strength. And for the second part, last week our weather history was about our record May rainfall so far. Now that we are done with the month, we finished with 9.45 inches, almost triple our average and now the second what is May to date. For your seven day forecast, we are turning up the heat and humidity today. Staying hot, but tomorrow some isolated storms for the afternoon and evening. And then a better rain and storm chance that comes for Friday and Saturday with our next cold front crossing Saturday evening. Stay safe, healthy, and see you for next Weather Wednesday.